You are watching TFI. Greetings, salutations, welcome to TFI, where we are embarking upon our series of speakers from Autodesk University 2019 as part of Autodesk's 20-year anniversary uh, commemorating inventors ticking over the 20-year-old age. We're here with Mike Thomas, uh, Technical Services Manager from Prairie Machine and Parts. It's Mike over there on the left. Hi, Mike. Hi there. So we're here to talk about Mike's class that he's doing at Autodesk University this year, which is the AnyCAD and the Exchangeability of Inventor. Uh, we'll talk a bit about Mike's class a little bit later on. But the reason why we're doing these videos is for a couple of reasons. First off, if, if you're watching this, if you're heading out to Autodesk University this year, then just to make you aware that Mike's class exists, if it's something that sounds like it's going to be up your alley, mate, well, then you can register for his class if there are spaces available. If you're not attending Autodesk University, you can watch the class after the fact. They usually get uploaded onto the Autodesk University website afterwards. And then you can watch it at your leisure. And then any pamphlets and leaflets and handouts that Mike creates, they'll be on that website as well. And you can download them along with any download files and stuff like that afterwards. So uh, yes, we're here with Mike Thomas, uh, Technical Services Manager from Prairie, a machine and parts from I'm not even sure if I'm going to get this right, mate. Saskatoon. Nailed Sask it. Saskatch Saskatchewan, Canada. That sounds like a nightmare if you're Chris Eubank. I have no time for such people. You have no class as far as I see it. Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. You nailed it. That's the place. That's exactly what I was thinking, mate. <laughs> so anyway, who... So you work for Pra Prairie Machine and Parts. Do, we, do you abbreviate that down to PMP? Wow, well, PM. PMP. PMP, PMP just, will do. Just do. Prairie. Right, so what, what, is, what is it that PMP do, and what do you do within PMP? Prairie Machine is a uh, mining machine manufacturer, uh, primary underground. So we build the machines that hit the rock and, and cut the stuff out of it. We build the conveyors to get the rock um, back to where it can make money, and then we service that and, and repair that and whatever needs there. I am the technical services manager, which is a big title for a glorified CAD manager, really. <laughs> um, but it's not just specific to CAD, it's anything service related technically between departments. So if it's um, how engineering talks to production, that's, that's me. If it's our ERP system, that's me. Yeah. If it's upgrading to Vault 2020, that's that's me. So if it's a software or a service, then it's me. That sounds, I didn't even know this. This is what a surprise. You, you sound like you do a scarily familiar or similar job to what I do, because the company that I work for create mining machines, but we go on the seabed and you do the same thing on land. Yeah. And I'm the CAD manager guy as well. Uh, that's very, very unusual, just learned that. <laughs> We're basically twins. Yeah, it sounds that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so how many how many uh, users do you manage within PMP? Is it a big outfit? You got just one site or multiple sites? No, we got one site. Um, we've got about twenty users of Inventor. We've got a sprinkling of AutoCAD electrical users. So call it 25, 25 users. Yeah. And then we've got Vault uh, basically available to the entire plant. Ah, interesting. Yeah, it does. It does sound remarkably familiar. Uh, also, what another thing that's, that looked familiar, mate, is that I noticed that you spent 12 years in the Autodesk partner channel with Imagine It. As, I did. As I did, not with Imagine It, but with a, another UK-based re reseller. Uh, and I also noticed that you were in there from 98. So if my calculations are correct, you were around when Inventor was released in the Rubicon days. So have you been involved with and around Inventor since day one, mate? Yes, I have been. Yeah, I was at the um, original Autodesk kickoff um, for Rubicon, yeah, that, that became Inventor. So I was there through so, the whole transition from mechanical desktop to Inventor and, and beyond. So thinking of, thinking back to those days, like, can you remember what it, it what it was like, like when you when you first saw Inventor, you first got your hands on it? Did it feel like a, f a flash in the pan that was just going to come and go? Because I think SolidWorks at the time had kind of it picked up a lot of trajectory at that point. Yeah. So did it feel like it invented would just snowball into what it is today? Or I mean, like, what was your thoughts and feelings on it at the time? It definitely felt fresh. It was funny that you mentioned SolidWorks because so many people when they first saw it were like, oh, is that the new SolidWorks? <laughs> so <laughs> it was a lot. No, it was, it didn't feel like that because of how mechanical desktop was. It was pretty clear with SolidWorks and you know, soon after that Revit, 
um, that that was going to be the, the future of it. So it didn't feel like a flash in the pan. It, it definitely appreciated, appreciated what mechanical desktop was, but what it could do. So Inventor definitely did not feel like that. Early versions of Fusion were a little bit different, yeah. um, but Inventor felt like this is this is it. Yeah, I, I was quite fortunate. I, I dodged the mechanical desktop days. I think I got the back end of it because I joined the channel in 2004. So right. mechanical desktop was kind of just pretty much yeah. almost entirely phased out by that point. Uh, so have you been involved with Inventor every single year since then, or have you had breaks and gaps? Or have you? No, nope, every single year. Because I went um, well, straight from school to working for Imaginet, and then straight from Imaginet to working here at Prairie. So I've touched every version of, in of Inventor. So uh, on Autodesk University, mate, is this your first rodeo for Autodesk University, or have you? are you a veteran? At I'm a veteran. This will be my... Um, eighth or ninth year at AU and it would be my seventh or eighth year speaking at AU. I'm also on the Autodesk University Advisory Council. So, oh, so you're yeah. going to have a busy couple of days. All right. Well, on, on to your classmates. So the class code, if anyone is heading out over to Autodesk University, the class code is, uh, I don't know who comes up with these, IM320977 if you're interested in searching for it. And it's any CAD and the exchangeability of Inventor. And the class is on the Thursday. Uh, this is absolutely the graveyard shift, mate. This is Thursday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. That's like a red eye time we're over in Vegas. Well, yeah, the only only worst one is the last class on Thursdays because no one wants to be there anymore. So yeah, it's the second worst spot. So the learning objectives for your class, we've got, so th these are the bullet point uh, areas of interest for Mike's class. So we're going to learn how to use Inventor AnyCAD to reference third party models, learn how to use 2D DWG data to build a new model, learn how to share information back and forth between Inventor and Fusion 360, and learn how the bomb can travel downstream. So, on the topic of AnyCAD, without spoiling the class and what you're planning on covering, can you briefly explain to people out there what AnyCAD is, just like in a kind of nutshell? It's a Autodesk marketing spin on Inventor and the data that it can handle both import and export. So it's any CAD because it's saying that it can handle anything and everything you want to throw at it CAD related. So it's not necessarily a single feature, it's more of like an ideology, it's more of a, a workflow that it exactly. can yeah. handle. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a collection of features or commands or buttons that you can push that falls under that same flagship of, of any CAD. So is, is any kind of workflow that you find yourself using in your day job on a regular basis yes typically it's it's parts that you get from a vendor or supplier and you want to utilize those in your designs but you don't necessarily want a huge footprint in there because you're just using it for reference so it's something that we use here probably on a daily basis yeah uh, so the videos just changed a little bit there we just lost mike's uh, video feed uh, connection issues over the water i assume between the uk and canada so um and we're back at the question. So I noticed in your bullet points there, Mike, that you've got a, a statement about sharing information back and forth between Inventor and Fusion 360. So is that is that a linkage Inventor to Fusion that you guys are using in the office, or is that just something you feel is going to be quite useful uh, moving forward for other people? We don't currently use Fusion here. So during my day job, we don't we don't use that. We don't have any. We, we we're an Inventor shop through and through, and we don't have any clients or vendors that are using. Uh, Fusion 360, so we don't use it there. But you can see kind of where the two products are going that I think it's going to be become a pretty critical piece of the puzzle. When you start having these companies that are using Fusion and, and maybe going to a manufacturer who, who's not and being able to exchange that, that data. So not during my day job have I used it, but definitely um, in other avenues I've, I've used it and played with it and poked at it and, and stuff like that. And I think it's important to get the word out that it is possible to do that. Yeah. You, they don't have to be separate silos. So what, what do you think about the likes of generative design? Is that something you think you could utilize in the future? Because um, obviously that's perfect for the AnyCAD linkage, pushing yeah. the inventor data through to generative design. Is, is, is generative something you guys could use AnyCAD with? Or is that, again, something that you haven't really looked at yet? All we've really done is just kind of um, circled the car and kicked the tires on that. Yeah, same here. <laughs> <laughs> We're a pretty prismatic um, in our products. You know, it's a lot of plate that's cut and welded together and some holes chilled through it. But we're seeing 
more and more opportunities where we're we're building these little linkages and other connectors and stuff and and the generative design is intriguing because it could get us to a place where we wouldn't know like areas of strengthening but, but minimizing the mass and some other things so we've actually identified a, a couple uh, projects that we are probably going to push through the generative design we've already got it done and, and designed but just to push it through the generative design and see what are the outputs yeah. so that that's actually a really good example where you could use the fusion run the generative design get it to a certain state and then push it back into inventor so it can go through our normal processes to get manufactured so is there anything that you can think of where you've used any kind of a real project that you can talk about like i mentioned earlier the biggest or the the time that we use it the most often is you get a you get a a step file or an IGES file or something from a vendor or a supplier. For a lot of people here, it was a bit of an education because you don't have to translate it. So you don't have to go through the process and wait for it to translate. And then you get this motor assembly that's got 5,000 surface bodies in it. That is this massive beast of, of, a, of a, a lump that you're placing to design just simply to get the mounting locations for it. So I've been the past year or two, I've really been waving that AnyCAD flag a lot to say, hey, we can place it as a step file. We don't have to convert it. It's it's referenced. It goes through the data management vault workflows the same. And you save yourself so much time and, and headache. And that's actually the where I got the idea for this class is that right there. And it's just you start looking at all the other avenues where you can use it and it, it makes sense. Regarding the, the actual class itself, who Who's, who would you say the class is aimed at? What kind of end user? Uh, and, and what are you what are you kind of hoping at the end of the class that they walk away with? I would say any any level of, of inventory user. I mean, I'm not going to go into a bunch of specifics about how to constrain components or how to create drawing views. Yeah. Um, but even for the beginner, it's really just to open your eyes that you may not walk away knowing how to do every single thing, but just walking away with, with an understanding of what's possible. Because it's what you don't know, you don't know. And when you get back to the office, you go, oh, wait a minute. I remember that we could bring AutoCAD geometry in and associate it and then use it to build my models and and leave it associated with that 2D drawing. Yeah. So, yeah. Any level of user. Yeah, because any card doesn't really have a button that says any card. That's right. It's more of a, a workflow, a, th a thing that you yeah. you know, an extra couple of lines in a, in a drop down list. So, is there anything else that you're going to be getting up to over at AU whilst uh, whilst you're there? So, you've got this class. Anything else going on? I've got three classes going on. I've got one on Venture and AnyCAD. We're doing. I'm going to do one on Vault and, and life cycle management. I'm doing a CAD management class on how to utilize your time. And then I'm also going to be sitting on a CAD managers panel, um, and we're going to be talking about CAD standards and how to manage CAD and all that kind of fun stuff. How do you even begin to prepare for four classes, Mike? That sounds like an unreasonable amount of work. Uh, it's really tough. I mean, fortunately for my vault class, it's one that I've done similar to in the past, so I'm able to take a lot of the content and just update it and, and massage it um, for this task specifically. But yeah, it's it's a matter of starting in August and prepping all your content and hoping that you're not winging too much of it when you show up in Vegas. Then just as we were starting the call there, I didn't actually realize you were on the Expert Elite scheme as well. Are you going to be are you going to be getting involved with any of the EE events over in Vegas? Uh, the cards on the table, I've not even looked at what they are yet. <laughs> I always try to. Um, if if they're not happening at the same time as my my class, I will definitely be there. So between the luncheons and and just even hanging out in the exhibit hall um, around the EE booth, that's probably the the best place in the exhibit hall to be at yeah. around all the other elites and just talking shop. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully, I'll I'll catch you there at some point. I tend to get pulled around and pushed around whilst I'm over there as well. Yeah. Uh, Probably not as much as you with four classes. You're going to be busy pretty much the whole time, but I'll, I'll try and catch you over there. All right, well, thanks very much, Mike. Uh, so just as a recap, Mike's class is AnyCAD and the Exchangeability of Inventor. That's on Thursday, November the 21st, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. If you're interested in that class, then you're heading over to AU. Check your AU app to see if there's any spaces left on the class and sign up if that's something that's going to be of interest to you. Or if you're not going to AU, and then stay tuned to the website as all the classes get uploaded afterwards and then you can download all the files and go through them at your leisure so 
thanks very much, Mike. Thanks for your time. Uh, I'll see you over in Vegas. Uh, good luck preparing for those four classes. That's uh, <laughs> I'm not doing that again. And, uh, I'll uh, I'll see you over in Vegas. Thanks, Neil. Cheers, Mike.